The United Nations Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change released the second part of its sixth assessment report on Monday. Wetted and approved by 270 authors and 195 governments, it tells the world how climate change may spell disaster for humanity. The third and final part of this report is likely to come out in April this year. The first assessment report telling about the effects of climate change was released way back in 1990. The four subsequent reports were published in 1995, 2001, 2007 and 2015. The latest report has for the first time assessed the regional effect of climate change. According to the assessment, several big cities of the world are at risk. The report warned that Mumbai could face flooding due to sea level rise, while Ahmedabad was at risk of facing a serious heat wave. The panel also warned that the ability of humans and that of nature to adapt to climate change was at risk, and they may not be able to adapt anymore if there is further rise in global warming. It noted that over 3.5 billion people or 45% of the global population was living in highly vulnerable areas now. UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres went on to dub the report as an atlas of human suffering. He also said that fossil fuels are choking humanity. The report described India as one of the most vulnerable countries. It said that about 35 million people could face annual coastal flooding by 2050 while 45 to 50 million are at risk by the end of the century. The IPCC also warned that the damage to Mumbai from the sea level rise could be up to $162 billion a year by 2050. According to Down to Earth, India's country-level social cost of carbon emission was estimated to be the highest at $86 per tonne of CO2. It means the Indian economy will lose $86 by emitting each additional ton of CO2. India is followed by the US where the economic damages would be $48 per ton of CO2 emission. Saudi Arabia is close behind at $47 per ton of CO2 emission. The report also flagged that the world will see a rise in vector-borne diseases like dengue and malaria. And it also claimed that climate change will lead to an increase in mental health issues. The first part of this report, which was released in August last year, had said that global average temperature will see 1.5 degrees Celsius of warming in next 20 years from the pre-industrial level. The panel had called it a code red for humanity. The panel said that rising sea levels and groundwater scarcity will have a direct impact on the Indian agriculture sector. Production of wheat, pulses, coarse and cereal yields could fall almost 9% by 2050 in the country. In the southern part of the country, maize production could fall by 17% if emissions are high. And these fall in production could cause price spikes in India, threatening food affordability, food security and economic growth, the report went on to say. It is also estimated that both the Ganga and Brahmaputra river basins will witness increased flooding due to climate change and continued climate change will cause decline in fisheries. The new IPCC report that was launched on the 28th of February shows that climate change uh, is projected to have a number of severe economic impacts. For instance, in Asia, water-related impacts of climate change on all sectors of the economy are projected to reduce GDP by uh, approximately 1% in high-income countries to up to 3% in low-income Asia, low to middle-income Asia by 2050 without adaptation or without mitigation. So that's, that's quite a substantial chunk of the economy that we are talking about. And this report particularly focuses on what the economies can do, what countries can do to adapt to climate change. And the findings are also very clear and stark that while there are a lot of adaptation options that have been already used by various sectors of the economy, be it agriculture, industry, energy, et cetera, the reality is 
that even many of these adaptation options will not remain effective at a higher level of warming, higher level of warming above 1.5 degree from the, from the pre-industrial uh, uh, industrial times, which basically means that we would also have to mitigate, we would have to reduce greenhouse gas emissions for adaptation to take space. And this has to be done in a way that is sensitive to these kind of GDP losses, which are anyway, any kind of losses to the economy would be borne mostly by the poorest segment of the population who are already very, very vulnerable. Uh, what's important is, is very clear that climate, if for climate change, we have to both adapt as well as mitigate. But many of the mitigation options itself are something that, say from a land or a water perspective, that can make some of those impacts even worse. Like some of the very co common mitigation measures like afforestation, uh, reforestation, or bioenergy, for example, can take away land for agriculture. And that is quite an important issue in a, in a country like India, where land is scarce and there's a food security security issue already going on. So even our mitigation, be it last scale solar parks or be it any of these other mitigation measures, we have to be very careful that the siting of mitigation is such that, that it doesn't compromise with existing land and water insecurity. Countries build policy responses to tackle climate change on the basis of finding of IPCC reports. The panel has now clearly said that if the temperature rise soared past the 1.5 degree Celsius threshold from the pre-industrial times, several changes could be irreversible. The panel has said that the 2 degree Celsius target could be disastrous. So the governments world over should ensure that lack of funds and political commitment should not come in the way of keeping the global mercury in check. If you like this video, share it and subscribe to Business Standard. For more news, views and insights, log on to www.business-standard.com. Do also follow us on YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, Telegram and LinkedIn.